Today, if you have your Bible with you, turn with me to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. You and I have something in us, in our hearts, that wants to rule and dictate every part of our lives. There is something in us that wants control. It says to us that we don't need to worry about others, but that we need to worry about ourselves. Take care of yourself. Fix yourself. Help yourself. We see this in the world today. Many preach and minister on self, 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 self. But we need to minister to those around us. We can minister to our own body. Take care of your body, for it is the temple of God. But do not forsake those outside of the assembly of God. Those outside of the church. There is a cruel and wicked dictator who wants to rule over your life and mine. And he wants to keep us in bondage to the enemy. Nobody, except for the devil, is as cruel as this taskmaster. Self. Sometimes our worst enemy is self. Have you ever heard that saying, you are your own worst enemy? I am my own worst enemy. You want to know what a dictator looks like? Go look in the mirror. Sometimes you and I can be such dictators and so selfish that we can push away people who really love us. Because of our own self and selfish ambitions, selfish desires, selfish thoughts, selfish ideas, amen, or selfish opinions. You and I are to be humble, but how can we be humble when all we think of is ourselves? Jesus Christ was the picture and the epitome of humbleness. And he said that he came not that men should serve him. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And yet we think sometimes or somehow in the world that we live in, Men want to be catered to. We want people to do for us. But we don't want to do for anyone else. Amen. God help us to step out in faith. And do more for our neighbors. For our friends. For our families. In the world that we live in today. There are many who need a helping hand. You and I. We take Jesus off the throne of our heart and we put self there. We say, Jesus, you can sit on this heart of mine every now and then, but not all the time. And it's sad because our heart should be completely the Lord's. Our heart should be completely given over to Him. Since the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden, 
Adam and Eve thought to themselves as the devil whispered in their ear, you can be like God. Do you ever find yourself thinking, man, I'm made in the image of God. Maybe I'm a little God. If you have, God help you. Because the devil was like that. And he desired to be like God. He desired to be God and to sit upon the throne of God. When you exalt yourself, you put Christ up on the cross once again and nail him to that cross. When you exalt yourself, you do just like the devil did. You fill your heart with pride. Be careful when you speak to others and you talk to them and you minister to them to not exalt yourself. But exalt Christ. We are self-centered people by nature. But this ought not to be so. In the body of Christ. We need to learn to be humble. Learn that when you have made a mistake. Repent quickly. Do you know what's wrong in the world that we live in today? Men do things. And they do not even ask. For forgiveness. They go and they trespass against someone else. And they say, well, I ask God to forgive me. When you trespass against someone, you are to ask for their forgiveness as well. Yeah, well, God heard me. That's pride in your heart that you don't want to go and say to someone, I'm sorry what I did to you. Because self says, no, I will not humble myself to that point. I'm better than that. I did nothing wrong. And you put yourself on the throne. You and I need a complete heart transplant. And that can only be through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says, for he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Do you believe that? If you believe that, praise God. Then we can work. On our hearts. Amen. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love. Being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. <clears throat> let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, of a slave, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him that name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven. And of those on earth. And of those under the earth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is 
Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Give him a clap on him. Amen. Who is Lord? Jesus Christ. Amen. He is Lord. Glory to God the Father. To live as a Christian, we must be humble. Not false humility, but true humility. Then one humbles himself, knowing what he has done wrong. Then one would humble himself and say, I will deny myself today that you, O oh God, would be exalted. Amen? When we fast and we pray, this is what we do. We say, I deny myself, Lord. You know what I like to say? Deny thyself, fool. Deny yourself. Don't be a fool. Deny yourself. Let God be exalted. Because God needs to be first in your life. He needs to be on top. He needs to be the one who you seek power from. Not in and of yourself. In and of yourself, you can do nothing outside of Christ. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, then you shall bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5 tells us this. Amen? Amen. And we are to humble ourselves that Christ may be exalted. You and I are not to be self-centered. We're not to be selfish. In the preaching that I hear today, I've heard some preachers, and you need it. yourself, yourself, self, 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 self. It's all about you, 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 you. And that is the doctrine of the devil. That a man takes his eyes off the cross, and sets them on himself. No wonder the world is in such trouble. We have Christians that exalt self instead of exalting Christ. They're in their workplace. They dare not to speak about Jesus Christ for the sake of the fact that maybe, maybe, they would offend somebody just by saying that name. God help us if we cannot be men and women that walk boldly before the throne of God, speak in the earth to men and women of the things of God, of the one and only thing that could save their soul. You ever heard that saying, cat's got your tongue? Devil's got your tongue. Don't let it be so. Let your tongue be used to bless the name of God. Amen. For in you saying nothing, you also curse that man or that woman that needs to hear that gospel message. Amen. For we have the truth in us that sets men free. Let us not be silent. For self-image. That people would look at a strange. That is a strange fellow. He is talking about Jesus. He's, let us speak truth. And be not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Be unashamed. Be ready to give an answer to those who ask of the gift of God that is in you. God has given us a message, the greatest message that the world has ever needed to hear. And right now, the time is now that we need to speak to all those who are lost and broken. Set yourself aside and let Jesus Christ be on the throne of your heart. And you will be able to speak truth to all men of all races. 
of all religions, of all statuses of life, both rich and poor, black and white, it doesn't matter. All men need to be saved. But only one name can save them and set them free. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We must crucify ourselves. Put to death the old man. Let God be exalted. Madison Avenue knows the power of self. They say you need to take care of yourself. You need to have a break today for yourself. You need to go sit on a mountain somewhere by yourself. You need to spend a million dollars on yourself. You need to be by yourself. That's why we have so many women and men that are for abortions. Because women say, I have to take care of myself. I have to get myself an education. I need to be, make something of myself. I didn't mean to get pregnant. Although I slept with five different guys last week. This wasn't supposed to happen. So give me a pill so I can kill that baby. You deserve a break. You owe it to yourself. It's your body, your choice. Lies from hell. Amen. Amen. You and I deserve death. That is what we deserve. For the sins that we have committed against God. But praise and glory be to God that he saves wretches like us. Bookstores are filled with books on success, self-esteem, realizing your potential, being the best, having the best, leaving behind the best. Let your name be the name above every other name. No, there is only one name that is above every other name, and that is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. It's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That's right. In heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth, every demon in hell trembles at the name of Jesus. Every demon on earth trembles at the name of Jesus. Every demon in every place on planet earth in the heavenly bodies will bow down. When Jesus Christ's name is spoken, it is at the name of Jesus that demons flee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We must learn that self needs to be crucified and Christ needs to be exalted. Put yourself upon the cross that Christ may be lifted up. He who is not worthy to take up his cross is not worthy to follow me. <clears throat> you cannot be his disciple. Were we not reading about that, Derek? Mm -hmm. He who is not willing to take up his cross is not worthy to be my disciple. Mm -hmm. We must be willing to lay down our lives, take up our cross and follow him. There is nothing so empty as self-centeredness. A brother of mine, whom we all know, his worst fear was to die alone. To die alone. Isn't that a scary thing? No one there to hold your hand. No one there to say goodbye. No one there to tell you they love you. No one to dry the tear from your eye. When you die, will there be someone there 
to hold your hand, to lift your head? Will there be someone there while you are on the couch or as you're dying on your bed? If you die by yourself, God help you. God help me. Let us be surrounded if, if, if possible, right? Because we don't know how we will die. But if possible, if we get to die in our own home, that somebody would be there with us that cares for us and loves us. Let us not be so prideful and selfish that we let no one into our life to be there for us. There are those of us who sometimes we want to be there for everyone else, but we won't accept anyone to be there for us. We have got to learn to give and to get and to be there for one another. Social engineers know the power of self. That's why we have abortion in the world today. Abortion is part of the social experiment. Socialism. Self. Says another man has more than I. Take from him and give to me. It's not my fault I was born into poverty. It's not my fault that I, I dropped out of school in the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, whatever grade. It was my mom's fault. It was my dad's fault. Everybody else's fault. And you, mister, must pay for it. That is self. And that is wrong. It's okay when someone offers you a helping hand. But for you to think that the world owes you something is selfishness. See, whenever people choose and make a choice to have an abortion, the choice isn't whether to have the baby or to not have the baby. The baby is already there. The choice is whether or not to let the baby live. Pro-choice. Choice for what? Finish the statement. Pro-choice to kill the baby. Pro-choice to whether I want to let the baby live or die. We have this problem because king self and queen self are on the throne. Woman goes to a man and says, I'm pregnant. He's like, oh my, what a surprise. We've only been fornicating for half a year. You're pregnant. Hmm. You're in school. I'm in school. I don't want to drop out. You don't want to drop out. Hmm. Why don't you just go have an abortion? And we can both go on with our merry little lives. And if this happens again, we can just, you can just take another pill or you can just go see another doctor and get rid of that child. God help us, it's wickedness. You and I, we've got to crucify self in the society and the world that we live in. We have to start with us, put ourselves Last and learn to put others first. Look at John chapter 8, verse 36 with me. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 36. In John chapter 8, verse 36. It says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Praise God. If the Son makes you free, then you shall be free indeed. You cannot be free until you have completely given your life 
to the Lord. Many of us find ourselves in bondage to sin and we have abortions or divorces or we leave our families because of self. Because we do not have Christ. But the Bible says, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Well, how can the Son make you free? Only if you accept Him as your Lord and your Savior. And you let Him sit upon the throne of your heart. You and I must learn to submit to God. When we submit to God, we humble ourselves. Do you know what the word submit means? To lower oneself beneath the authority of another. You and I must learn to humble ourselves under the authority of God Almighty. Amen. We must ask God to set us free and to save us and submit to Him. Then we will have freedom. Then we will learn to say no to self, no to sin, and yes to our Master. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 through 3, it speaks about a word called vain glory. That men had vain glory. In the world that we live in today, what do men have? Vain glory, which is pride. They glorify themselves in vain, which is prideful. They said, look at me. I have the rainbow colored jacket. I have a rainbow. Oh, I represent rainbows. You represent the devil. You take the rainbow of God that God meant for us as a sign to show that he would not flood the world again. And you make a mockery of it. We see the world today. They take everything that God has blessed and they try to make a mockery of it. Spitting in the face of God. Treating it with irreverence. Pride causes strife and strife causes division. We see it in the world today. Canada, if you do not agree with someone's gender, now you can be taken to jail. You can be, your bank account shut down. Your kids can be taken from you because of vain glory, because of pride, because of selfishness. But they don't see this. God help us. You and I are called to be selfless and to crucify self as crucified as Jesus Christ crucified himself for us. He crucified himself so that we can live. He crucified himself so that we could have life eternal. We are to crucify ourselves so that others can have life also. But how can we do that when we're too busy? Fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. That's why fasting and prayer is such a powerful and wonderful thing. Because you learn to deny yourself. You learn to say no to self and yes to God. You learn to think of other people. You pray for others. I pray to God that you don't fast and just pray. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, do for me. Lord, me. Lord, me, 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 me. Lord, I, Lord, me. When you are fasting and praying, <clears throat> you better learn to fast and pray for others who are in need also. When we fast and pray, 
It's not just so that we go hungry, but also so that we take a meal to someone who is in need and share the gospel with them. We need to live a selfless life in Christ. What's wrong with the church today is no one wants to deny self. You and I are called to love one another. It's the second greatest commandment. To love one another. To love thy neighbor as thyself. According to John 13, 34. It's not a suggestion. In John chapter 13, verse 34. It is a command. It's a command. God commands us. To love one another. He doesn't say, maybe you should love one another. He says, think about loving one another. It says, we are to love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. This is the last command that Jesus Christ gave before his crucifixion, before his arrest. Before he got arrested, it was the last command that he gave to his disciples. Very important. There was a reason for it. You notice how much God spoke about the church being lovers of self rather than lovers of God. In the world, even, they would be lovers of self than lovers of God. They would be loveless. In the book of Revelation, there was a loveless church who left their first love. God, help us. We are to love others as ourselves. Care for others as ourselves. When we have people who get saved, we need to love on them and share the gospel with them and keep on encouraging them. Encourage one another. We need to encourage each other as the body of Christ. That's why it's good to send out Bible bits and Bible verses and share with one another. One encouraging word. God speaks to us. It's amazing whenever somebody texts me something or sends me a Bible verse that has to do exactly with what I'm sitting there getting ready for a sermon ready for on that, I'm like, wow, God's speaking to this brother, amen? God's speaking to them. You know that's the Holy Ghost. Out of all the different subjects that it could have been, it, at that moment, God speaks to us. And he says, send this. We think it's of ourselves. We think that we, we, this was, no. God had it planned, and he, he knew what he was doing, Amen. You and I, we need to love one another and care for each other. Welcome one another. Always be hospitable to one another. Learn to forgive one another when we trespass against one another. We must learn to put Christ on the throne and self on the sidelines. Amen. The mind of Christ is a servant's heart. A servant's heart, according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Jesus had a servant's heart. And we want to be like Jesus, amen? amen. Do you want to be Christ-like? Or do you want to be self-like? Worldly-like? Or do you want to be like Mike? Huh? Want to be like Mike? No? Hope not. Anybody heard that, right? Like Michael Jordan? I want to be like Mike. Uh, I can never be like Mike. I want to be like Christ, so. I can be humble. I can humble myself. I can learn to love. I have learned to love. I can say no to self and yes to God. Jesus said no to self. 
He said, Father, nevertheless, take. He said, if it be your will, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, let not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Amen. And he humbled himself and made himself lowly and of no reputation and took the cross for you and I. God has a ministry for each and every one of us. We all can be saved. Paul was a Roman citizen, but he was also a Jew. He made himself a servant to the barbarians, to the wise, and to the foolish, to the Pharisees and to the scribes, to the Jew and to the Gentile. He said to all men that he, he was all things to all men, which meant he was willing to lower himself, humble himself, although he had been taught in the finest of, of colleges and in the, in the greatest, by the greatest schools, by the greatest teachers of the time. He knew that he had to humble himself for the sake of Christ. That man could be saved and added to the church. God help us to humble ourselves. Paul the Apostle saw every single man, every woman, every child as precious in the eyes of God. He set himself aside. And he said, God, I know I'm going to die. Let me die doing your will. Let me die. Let me be mocked and laughed at and scorned to die. As you were, be willing to give my life as a sacrifice as you did. And he did. Paul the Apostle is one of my greatest, one of the greatest apostles who ever lived. I love his teachings and his books. And the books that were written about, about him and his life, there's so many. But the number one teacher... And number one man who I worship and who I adore is the Lord my God, Jesus Christ. Son of man, son of God. Amen. Amen. Son of God because he was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. Son of man because he was born of the Virgin Mary. Amen. He humbled himself and he died for you and me. Paul humbled himself and many, many, many men were saved and are being saved even today because he preached the gospel and he allowed God to be exalted. Peter finally got it after denying Christ three times. How many times will you deny Christ? Before you put Christ on the throne and put yourself aside. Amen. We need to be crucified with Christ to our old life and be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and live the new life in Christ that He has given us. Let us walk. In the spirit and not in the flesh. By faith and not by sight. And let us crucify self. That God would be exalted. And people would be added to the church. Amen. Okay. Today. Remember. Yourself. Can be your worst enemy. Let God be exalted. And humble yourself. That he would be exalted. Whosoever humbles himself, I will exalt. Whoever exalts himself, I will humble. Amen. Amen. Lift up Jesus Christ today. Lift him up in the world, in everything that we do. If I can have every head bowed and every eye closed. Today, is Christ the king of your heart? Is Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Is he the one... Who rules your every thought? 
Is Jesus Christ the one who you are willing to die for? Many are willing to live for Christ, but are we willing to die for him? The time is drawing near when we will soon find out. Who will not just live for God, but be willing to die for him? Amen. Amen. This afternoon, if you know that you've been selfish and you've been exalting self and maybe you've even put others down and lifted yourself up and forgot in that moment that God is the one that needs to be exalted, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the proper time. Let God be lifted up in your life and in mine. I pray that today God speaks to you and speaks to me and that we would humble ourselves and let Jesus Christ be lifted up. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, if the Son of Man be lifted up, I will draw all men and women unto myself. Let God be exalted today. Amen. Today, if you need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you need to crucify self, Pray this prayer with me. Whether you're saved, lost, backslidden, come before God and just give it to Him. Give it to Him and just make sure that you are crucifying yourself. Don't be too prideful to the point where you just don't care. Learn to care because souls needed to be added to the kingdom. You need to add fruit to your life that God will be exalted. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, if you need Jesus Christ, pray with me. Say, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I repent, Lord, I repent, Lord of my sins. Of my sins. I, ask you I ask you to come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. Be my Savior. And fill me, Father. Fill me, Father. With the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I confess. I confess. That you are the Christ. That you are the Christ. I confess. I confess. And I believe. I believe. That you died on that cross. You died on that cross. That you were buried. That you were buried. And rose three days later. And rose three days later. To forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. And you were born. And you were born. Of a virgin. A virgin. And we thank you, we thank you, because you are the Son of God, you are the Son of God, and the Son of Man, and the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good God. Amen. Thank, you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. This afternoon, do you know what Jesus, whenever he cursed the fig tree, why did he curse the fig tree? Because it bore no fruit. He saw it had leaves, but it had no figs. He looked at it and he said, you hypocrite. He cursed that tree. Oh God, help us. Let us not be those who just have pretty little leaves, but let us bear fruit, meek for repentance. Amen. Amen. Let us bear fruit. This souls would be added to the kingdom. Don't be a hypocritical tree. Amen? There need to be souls that are going to heaven on account of your salvation. You have to bear fruit. You have to draw people to Christ. I am the vine and you are the branches. If I abide in you and you in me, then you shall bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. He cursed that fig tree and it died. God, I don't want to be cursed. Let us bear fruit. Let us be trees. Let us be branches that are connected to the vine. And let us bear fruit. Amen. 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 God bless you all and have a good night.